are ready with our intermediate frictions. So three frictions, three steels. This particular unit did not come with a wave plate. Some of them do, some of them don't. And then the wide portion of the pressure plate goes to nine o'clock position in the case. And install our snap ring. And this is the heavier duty one, which is always recommended if you're doing anything performance oriented. All right, then we're gonna measure clutch clearance, but first I wanna air check. So you put the uh, air into the feed bolt, that's for your intermediate frictions. Good strong apply. So now I'm going to measure clearance. I have the dial indicator set up and all I'm doing is using an, ex an extra rear ring gear that I have to serve as kind of a base for the indicator. That'll allow the seat to be stable. Okay, we're gonna introduce air into the intermediate feed bolt. And at 41 thousandths. It's actually 42 thousandths, it's returning to slightly below zero. Okay, we dropped our intermediate band in. So we got the band anchor here, and then the uh, other portion where the apply surfaces for the servo pin goes right here to the right of it. So now we're gonna drop in our direct drum. I'm using a special tool. You don't need to use the tool. In fact, uh, fact uh, what a lot of folks will do is leave the frictions out, just drop the drum in by itself so you can you know, get your hand around the, uh, the spring cage and such. So it'll be a lot easier to manipulate and seat on the frictions. So you wanna move it all around until you got everything splined on, all of the uh, intermediates onto the race. So when you apply air to the intermediates and the drum moves, then there's still one or two frictions that are hanging up. So a lot of times that'll help free them up. Okay, once it's in, the drum won't move when you put air into the intermediate frictions. Forward drum, just double check, make sure you got your washer here. And then just work it onto the, you know, onto the clutches. So we got uh, the hub meshing with the frictions and the direct drum, it's fully seated. Lube up the bore. Put 
Put some lube in the ceiling ring pocket for the stator. And as well as the journals. And then just make sure no holes are covered before you lower the pump into the case. Once you got your bolts threaded, just go ahead and tap it in. And now we're going to go to full torque, which is 18 foot-pounds. Now, as I mentioned, this is a six bolt pump. However, it's also provisioned for that Allison transmission, which takes seven pump to case bolts. So we're gonna install the, uh, I guess the dummy bolt there with the little gasket so that we don't have leaks. All right, let's go ahead and check in play. All right, dial indicator set up. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is grab your long screwdriver again and more or less repeat the rear uh, gear and play procedure. So take your screwdriver and stick it underneath the ring gear and pry up until you cannot pry up any longer. And then note the reading. So this matches our end play. It looks like 12, 12 and a half thou. Now zero the indicator at that location. Because you do not want your front end play figure to reflect uh, both front and rear gear travel. So now with the uh, indicator zeroed as far as actual, you know, we were netting out the rear end play, now you can go ahead and uh, check front end play. And if you want, you can just Keep forcing upward on the rear on the rear ring gear and getting the gear train under tension. 
while you do this. So it looks like we're at 18 thousandths. Spec calls for 7 to 19 thou. 18 thou. 17 and a half, 18 thousandths. I'm good with that. Okay, the last bolt is that dummy bolt, and that's going to take 18 foot-pounds as well. This one's 15 millimeter. And that should do it for the pump. All right, we got the trans horizontal. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the vacuum modulator valve, modulator and governor. So we'll prep the board for the modulator valve, little WD-40. And then the modulator valve itself is gonna go in this way. So you want um, this kind of cupped end facing inward. And the modulator itself, just move up your O-ring, a little bit of lube in the bore, and this, the, uh, Retainer takes a half inch bolt. There is a torque spec on this. I'll be honest, I never use it. I just snug it up. And then just put your little elbow on. The modulator's done, so you can move on to the governor. Same deal with the governor, just prep the board a little bit with some assembly lube. And then body of the governor as well. And then just make sure that it turns when you turn the output shaft that the uh, drive and driven gear mesh nice and clean. Then your gasket. And then you could put a little bit of assembly lube just to kind of prep it so it sticks and holds in place. And the cover also takes four half inch bolts.
torque spec for these is between 96 and 144 inch pounds, so I just typically take them to 130. And you're gonna have to go around a couple times while the gasket compresses. Next, we'll do the speedometer gear. So the housing itself will get a new seal. So uh, they typically, typically come with this uh, little metal C-clamp or C-ring. So that just goes in first. Just like that. And then the seal itself is going to go in like this. So you're just going to press it on in to, until it bottoms out. And put a little lubricant on the stem for the speedometer gear itself. And install it like so. A little assembly lube in the bore and on the O-ring. And you can install it with the uh, mounting tabs offset to the left. Thread in your 10 millimeter bolt. Spin the output shaft to confirm that the speedometer gear is rotating. And then once it is, you can move on. Okay, next install your selector shaft. And the parking lever is gonna go like this when connected to the rooster comb. So the bend faces out. And then follow it up with your 916 castellated nut. No torque spec on this, just simply get it as tight as you can get it. You don't want it coming loose. Next, attach your, your parking pole spring. So it's just going to come underneath the spring, or the pole rather, like so. and then your lever is gonna go over top of it. You have your retainer, two half inch bolts. Check it, make sure it works. You got your spring and then you have your servo. Just put a little bit of assembly lube and then carefully work the servo into the board. So we have the parts for the low reverse servo slash one two accumulator piston assembly all together based on the order that they're going to go. Uh, so we have this uh, servo pin, spring retainer, low reverse servo spring, end washer, piston itself, and then.
for the 1-2 accumulator, we have the spring and the accumulator piston. So go ahead and, uh, and of course we have the clip for the servo. So we're gonna put that together first. So everything's gonna kinda go like this. And you're gonna have to press down on the servo to expose the snap ring groove so you could seat the snap ring. Okay. We're back over the transmission case and what I'm gonna now do is test my band clearance. And to do that, I'm gonna take the uh, low reverse servo piston, I'm gonna leave off the O-ring seal and I'm also gonna remove temporarily the one two accumulator piston and its spring. So the instructions that I follow generally speaking are from CK Performance and what they have you do is Press down on the piston until you cannot, you know, press it into the bore until you cannot go any further with it. Uh, that represents full band apply. Then you're going to look at the uh, gap or the, I guess, the distance between the case here between these two bolts and the uh, top of the servo radius here. And what you're looking for is roughly between an eighth and a quarter of an inch distance. And that's, I think his instructions are 175 to 200 thousandths. Now, strictly speaking, he has you uh, do this with the gear train installed, but nothing else. And he'll have you spin the, uh, either the sun gear shaft or the intermediate shaft so that you're rotating the band until this is fully compressed and where you can't rotate it anymore. And then you take your reading. So we'll, let, we'll go ahead and do that now. Again, I know I have the whole case assembled, but the principle is basically the same. So you're gonna press it in as far as it'll go. And then you'll look at where the, where the top of the radius is in relation to the uh, top of the case between those two bolt holes. And based on what I'm seeing, um, oops, sorry about that. Um, in that neighborhood between an eighth and a quarter of an inch, I could tell by eye. So assembly lube in both bores. And then install your perimeter seal on the piston for the reverse. And put your gasket on. So six half inch bolts, and they'll get between 50 and 20 foot pounds. So just thread them just to get them started so that you can line up the gasket and, and the cover. And then what I'll do is I'll press down on the cover while I zip down the bolts. Okay, so just rotate the output shaft, make sure that the band isn't dragging on, you know, on that uh, high planet's band surface. So I'm doing 18 foot pounds and I'm just gonna go back and forth across the cover. So no drag when you're rotating the output shaft in the direction of engine rotation as if the transmission was moving forward or in a forward range setting and that's really all you're concerned about. Okay, to air check the uh, 
low reverse servo piston apply. Just gonna stick your air nozzle right here at this location and then apply air. And what you're doing is you wanna watch the uh, band surface on the drum to see it move and apply the band.